Hey, everybody. So here he is, my good friend, Phil Stringer. Welcome. Thank you so much for having me. It's an honor to be here. Love love any chance I get to talk with you. <laughs> oh, I love that. Yeah, we met a few years ago now right yeah. at, at an event and then and then met him again at an event and then i found out that he sings so i pulled him into the kitchen of a, a hotel and we made That's him right. sing in the back of the hotel. and right. we've, been, we've been friends ever since That's so right. um, and we're both in the same state right so north carolina right. represent but i feel like we we hang out even more when we're at conferences or other states so <laughs> That's because you were in, you said to me before in the, you know, pre-show, you said you were in th at 36 events in November, yeah. 36 speaking events between virtual and live, which, so you're the one that's everywhere. That's why I have to come fly to see you there outside you of North Carolina. <laughs> there you go. When, when we log off of this podcast, I'm literally heading straight to the airport. I'm in Austin, Texas right now, flying to Seattle. So if you guys want to come hang out in Seattle for a couple of days, let me know. <laughs> I love it. You're in the coolest hotel room ever because we were like, is that virtual backdrop? But really cool hotel. So let's get started. So Phil, yeah. tell them a little bit about your beginnings into real estate because before real estate, you were a top sales agent at General Electric, if I'm remembering correctly. Yeah. So that's where my whole sales career started. So I had graduated high school and my brother-in-law was with GE. And so he had some connections and I ended up getting an entry level job at General Electric. And right. I had the opportunity to just join the team as an entry level agent, or I could join the sales team. And I had no idea. I had nothing like I didn't know about sales, right? I didn't know if I'd be good at it. I didn't even know if I would like it. But I saw that the sales team made more than the non sales team because of commission. And yeah. so I was like, sure, like, I'll, I'll try it. And so you had to qualify to be on the sales team and I had qualified. And so they gave me the option. And so I said, yes, just because of the money, I knew nothing about it. And I just, I dove in and I learned as much as I could about sales techniques. I'm an 18 year old kid, right? And so right. I was just trying to soak everything up, learn from as many people as I could. I sought out the top agents and tried to figure out what they were doing. And by the time I was 19, so my first year there, I had made top sales agent worldwide for GE. There are several countries. And it opened up management opportunities with GE that were possible. And it really just opened up a lot of different uh, opportunities for me as a young kid. I ended up going to college in North Carolina and pursued another path. But I had a few years of sales under my belt and management under my belt with sales. And there was a brokerage in North Carolina, Jason Bramlett Real Estate, mm -hmm. and we attended the same church. He was on the board of the church. He had a great brokerage and he saw what I had accomplished at GE. And he was like, man, you would really do well working here. He, he was always trying to poach me. Right? Yeah, <laughs> and, yeah. uh, and I always wanted to work for him because I thought he was such a great guy, like just salt of the earth, like best yeah. kind of person. But that wasn't, I wasn't pursuing that anymore. I wasn't in the sales uh, industry. And at one point, a few years ago, it was probably three years by now, I was looking for a change. And I said, hey, look, does that offer still stand? It had been six years since he had talked to me before about, hey, do you want to join? And he was looking to hire a, a chief operating officer mm -hmm. and to run the brokerage and to, so he could do higher level stuff and vision and, and recruiting and whatnot. And so I wasn't familiar with real estate at all. Yeah. But I had a sales background and I almost had an outside perspective that people who are in real estate for a very long time might not have. It, it was a set of fresh eyes, right? Yeah, yeah. And that's how I got into real estate. And honestly, it was Jason showing me the EXP model because he had just switched from an independent brokerage to EXP. And I thought, okay, I want to do this. This yeah. excites me. Like selling yeah. homes isn't really my thing, right? Like I'm not interested in selling homes and making a career of it, right. but building a business like this is so exciting to me. And that's why I jumped in. I love that. I love that. And you were on that team as the COO, but team leader, and, and you taught the agent scripts and dialogue. So because sales is sales. And I think it's so interesting when you're really good at sales, all of a sudden management opportunities come up. Now, I'm a believer that just because you're good in sales doesn't mean you're a good manager. I don't think I'm a good manager. I don't. And I had to have people around me to start that process of building the business. So did you love the management and the coaching of people? Did you love that part? I didn't really love management. I feel like I'm decent at it, but I'm not 
as strong at management like you uh, as the sales. I love sales. I love making connections with people, but the day-to-day management of a team, it's not like I don't wake up and I'm like, oh, I can't wait to manage a team. Those things that like gives me that prey drive of, yes, I want to do sales on the other hand is is exciting to me. Yeah. I love that. I love it. So you help with the team, you go to EXP. That's when we connected and, and we met. And then all of a sudden you went from Phil, the, the team leader, COO, to I feel not an overnight success, but it was like overnight you were the AI guy, like literally. So tell me about that transition because your, what is it, journey or destination almost changed. And yeah. so tell me how that happened. Yeah, it was almost by accident. And basically what it was is I was sitting there and chat GPT had just come out and everyone was talking about it. AI has been around for a very yeah. long time in many different applications, but chat GPT gave this tool that was widely available for free and mm-hmm. people just freaked out. So now everyone's talking about AI and you know, this was over a year ago. And I remember before all of that went crazy, I thought I've seen real estate agents go crazy over this thing, Mm -hmm. but they're only using it to create property descriptions and maybe like a Facebook post. Right. But I wonder if there's a way that you can actually use this tool to leverage your time to be more efficient, more productive, and actually generate more revenue. Like how can we use this thing to sell more homes? Like it's great. You can use it for a property description and you'll save yourself 15 minutes and that's awesome. But can we use it for something that's even, that's going to move the needle even more. And I was on a flight, I believe it was EXP con the previous year, 2022 EXP con flying from Vegas to back to North Carolina. So it's Mm -hmm. a what four, four and a half hour flight. Like it's a longer flight. And I remember I took my laptop out and I thought, you know what, I can create something that will help our team and I can create something that's going to help EXP agents really move the needle. And so I started writing out prompts that would actually get really good results in ChatGPT because I found out with talking to people, there's two issues with AI and real estate. Mm -hmm. Agents don't know one, what to ask and two, how to ask it to get the best results. And so I sat there for four and a half hours and the entire time I was just creating prompts, testing them, refining them, figuring out which ones would actually get really good results, creating workflows within ChatGPT. And what I did is I started creating a bank of prompts that real estate agents could copy and paste into ChatGPT. They didn't have to think about what to ask it. I had done the work for them and they didn't have to think how to ask it. And so that started basically this project for me to create this bank of prompts that would Mm -hmm. help real estate agents. And every single night I would go home from work and any of my free time that I had, I would work on this project. Like I still have not turned on a TV in Mm -hmm. 20 months. It's been 20 months since I turned on a TV. That's because you're always on a plane. (laughs) That's true. That is true. Yeah. So it was one of those things where I was like, I'm going to be hyper-focused and I'm going to do everything I can to help agents as much as I can. So what happened then is a friend of mine, another EXP agent from Virginia beach, her name's Tiffany. And she reached out to me. She goes, Hey, will you do like a social media training for our group? And I said, sure. I said, do you want me to talk about this AI thing? That's like going on. She was like, yeah, you can throw it in if you want. Nobody really knows about it, but I think people would be interested. I was like, we'll have this pack. And I I figured I'd package it up and sell it for 97 bucks. (laughs) And so I went to that event and like the whole room bought that prompt pack. Like everyone was like, this is the most amazing thing. They started using it. They started getting really good results. We had people getting listings from what they were doing. And that just exploded word spread. Some of the leadership of EXP reached out to me and said, what is this thing that you did? Like what's going on? And then I remember it was Albie Stasek, Honey Badger, EXP. He got on a call with me and he said, dude, this is amazing. He said, why are you not coaching this? Why are you, why don't you have a, an academy that you're teaching this? I was like, well, I never thought it. I just thought that this was like a little product that I could give people. He was like, no, you need to teach people how to do this. And that's where the whole thing started. It was from that conversation with Albie. And since then it has just absolutely exploded. Like my life changed what six months ago. It was in April. Yeah. Yeah. It was nuts. Cause it was like, 
it just, it, I remember Brent Gove posting something about it, EXP Con, and it just, I was like, this is a different guy now. Like your career just went this way, <laughs> yeah, um, which is amazing. So let's, de- let's dig deeper about the AI thing. So AI, now there's all these different applications and it's gone crazy, crazy. And of course it should be because it's making everybody smarter and faster. So I feel like the six months here is almost like six years in the past of yeah. how caught up. So when you think about AI, what are like the top five tools right now? Because I know you have a list that you actually give to people and maybe we can give that out to people if they contact you or whatever, but what are the top five things right now or top five applications that are tools that they could use? Yeah, for sure. So obviously the number one tool that everyone already knows, but it is amazing and will change your business is ChatGPT. So that's going to be tool number one. Uh, some other tools that maybe some people aren't necessarily using. Number two, I would say, is a tool called Opus Clip, O P U S. And the web address for that is opus.pro, P R O. Mm-hmm. Essentially, what this does, you throw in a video, and this video can be any length, it can be shot horizontally, it doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. It crops it to vertical for short form content, it adds the captions and the emojis automatically. But the real power comes with something called Clip Genius, which is an AI curation where it takes the transcription of the video to understand what the video is about. Mm-hmm. And then from that understanding, it says, all right, this portion right here is a really good hook that's going to grab the attention. So we're going to put that at the beginning. And now we're going to pair that with relevant highlights to create you one TikTok, real, YouTube short, whatever. And it gives you multiple, eight 10, 12, 15, I've seen 20 plus options Mm -hmm. of reels or short form content from the video that you upload. And so that one's really powerful because you don't have to figure out how to be a a video editor as a real estate. Exactly. We didn't didn't get into real estate to be a video editor. That's not the reason. So that's a good one. Yeah. And too many realtors don't want to do video because of that reason. They're like, I don't know what to do. So I love that. That's great. And, And video editing is such a daunting task that mm-hmm. having some type of tool that will do that. Now, I would say if you're already outsourcing that job, because a lot of people will pay a VA to, to do that work, that's right. great. You don't have to fire your VA if you don't want to, but what you could do is you could give that tool to your VA and you could 10X their output for you. So now you're getting 10 times more content for the same amount of money that you're paying your VA and it's really worth it. Yeah, totally good. I yeah. love it. Well, number three then I would say is a tool uh, called Descript. And it's staying in line with the the video the video thing. But when I go around and I show people Descript, like they're just blown away because you throw a video in. So like I I take my Opus clip and I throw my Opus clip video into Descript. Mm-hmm. What happens is you have the video on the right hand side, like a little preview, and then you have the transcription, the words of everything that was said on the left. But if you want to edit the video, you edit the transcription like it's a Word document. So you yeah. can copy or not copy, you can select like a word or highlight a word or a sentence, hit backspace, and it edits the video to the words. So you don't have to know how to edit video. You can just edit the words to have it say what you want to say. And there's a, a couple really neat one-click things that will help you and save you a ton of time in Descript. You can click to remove all filler words. And it will highlight every one of the filler words. Like, and you can just remove all in one button, boom, all your filler words, the ums, the uhs, they're gone. Mm-hmm. And then there's another button that says remove silence with short form content. It's got to be snappy. It's got to be going. If, right, if you right. drag on or you stop for a second, you're going to lose them. It will take any of the silences and it'll crop it to where it's all snappy. And you can pick how quick you want it or whatever. And you hit one button and it does it to the whole video. So yeah. those two tools together and paired together will absolutely change the game just for video content for you. And um, I'm not techie and I vouch for this. Like I have used it. I have clicked. I have removed. If Tina Call can do it, anyone can do it. So it's go. very, very easy. Very easy. Yeah. Number, what am I on? Number four now, I think, right? Yeah. These Number four, four, I would say this is a free tool as well. So this is cool. It is a tool called Adobe Firefly. Okay. And the reason why I say Adobe Firefly, so this is one of those ones where you can type in a prompt and then it generates an image. Now, I don't see a whole lot of practical use cases for those image generation softwares, unless you're trying to create something for some type of campaign or whatever. But what, for about, real- what about, can it do this? Because this popped in my head, my ideas, before and after photos for a real estate agent. 
kitchens before and after. Yeah. And, oh yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. You we, could. Totally and the only reason, the only reason I ask is we were looking for more before and after photos in our own case studies and we couldn't come up with enough. So I was like, huh, I wonder if yeah, I could use it. It would be an AI generated thing, sure. but, um, but we but just want people to see. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Now the, the real power with that tool though, I think for real estate agents mm -hmm. is there's a tool called generative fill and you click on that tool and you can either insert or remove something from an image. Okay. So if you hit remove and you just have this little paintbrush and you just scratch out what you want removed, you hit remove, you can not tell. Like it fills in the image to Crazy. remove the item. So for an example, if you get your listing photography back and someone forgot to move their dang car out of the driveway, right, right. right? you can remove that car from the driveway. You hit remove. You literally cannot tell the shadow of the car is gone. The concrete's perfect. The grass is perfect. And so you don't want to do that to change the structure of a home, obviously, because sure. you don't have to represent what's going on. Right. But little things that you're like, oh, why did they leave that book laying there? Click right, and you don't have to know how to be like a photo editor. You don't have to know Photoshop and all that stuff. You didn't get into real estate to do that again, you know? I love that. Our producer of this show in the background, his wife works for us doing these listings. So I hope that we're making notes on this because there you go. people do leave their cars or their laundry baskets or whatever in photos when oh. we want to strangle them. <laughs> and when I do presentations, I actually pull up real listing photos. Yeah. And I will remove stuff that shouldn't be there to make it look prettier and cleaner. And, and I do it in front of people's eyes and they're just like, oh my gosh, like it, it does it in a five seconds and it looks yeah. perfect. Right. I love it. I love it. I got to go play with that one. I haven't played with yeah. that one. Yet. And that okay, one's cool. free. Anyone can play it. around with one. Number okay. five, I would say is a, a tool called designer okay. and designer creates eBooks from mm. any type of content that you upload to it. So let's say for an example, you wrote a blog, you could upload that blog to designer and it'll create an ebook. Let's mm. say you are, have a podcast. You could upload the podcast. It'll create an ebook based on what you were talking about in the podcast, video, any type of PDF, word document, whatever you upload content mm -hmm. and it creates an ebook from that content. So let's say for an example, we go into chat GBT and we write a blog about I don't know, the top three tips before selling your home in Raleigh, North Carolina, right? Yeah, yeah. With that blog, we put that blog into Designer. It creates us an ebook of the top three tips before selling your home in Raleigh, North Carolina. Mm -hmm. We now offer that as a download, a free download to our audience. Mm -hmm. And we have them give their name, email, and phone number in order to download that free download. What are you doing? You're establishing your authority, right? You are um, providing value to your audience, but you're getting leads. You're getting contact information for people that are interested in knowing the top three tips before selling their home. And if they're doing that, then they probably need to know or probably want to sell their home or know someone who needs to sell their home at some point. And so you're getting these leads and it's a lead magnet is what it is. I love that. And really, we talk about it in our groups, in our mastermind groups all the time. You have to get people, A, to know your name. You've got to get out on camera. you got to, you got to have some sort of lead magnet and build your email list. Just get yeah. that list going so you can talk to that audience. I love that. So the yeah. ebook, so is it creating more verbiage outside of what the blog is or is it the exact verbiage? Is it no. adding to it? it creates its own verbiage about okay. what your content's about. So okay, okay. what it'll do is it'll lay out an ebook. It'll put images in and it's going to throw in images based on what it thinks your content's about. Now you That's can so go cool. in and drag in a new picture, pop, right. it's done, but it's getting right. the layout done and 80% of the heavy lifting is done for you. I love that because I, yeah. yes. Oh my God. That's such a great one. Love yeah. it. Look at all that. Okay. All right. So we've got these five and I know you could probably spit out 20, but we'll start with these favorite five. I want to go back to chat GPT because it's the most popular one. Yep. And the one thing that I realized with prompts and, and correct me if I'm wrong is people didn't talk to it like a human. And what you were good at explaining to everyone is they didn't slow down to speed up. So if I want to ask it, I don't know, to write an email firing a lender and there were, or to create something in the marketing department, it's like, it's, Hey, you are my marketing director. Right. And your superpower is this. And you're going to like literally like asking it very specific. Can you go into that a little bit? Because I think people sure. miss that. I just, they miss it. 
what are the like the tone of the voice, the, mm -hmm. the description, the role of the person that they would be talking to? Can you give them an idea of how they should structure that conversation? Sure. Yeah. I think in general, people need to understand it's like you're hiring an assistant to create mm -hmm. content. So let's say right. you hired someone to write all your blogs for you, or you hired someone to take over your social media, or you hired someone to do all of your email campaigns, right? Right. If you hired me for that job, Tina, and we didn't know each other, like we just met and you said, hey, Phil, I want you to uh, write all of my emails. You wouldn't just say, hey, write an email about this. All right, go, Phil. You would right. literally have to tell me, all right, here's my business. I'm in real estate for one, yeah. right? right? I live here. Here's my market. Here's my target audience. This is what I'm trying to do. And people don't understand that you have to train chat GPT on all of those things that you would have to train any other employee on, or it's just going to give you generic content. Right. And so if you can talk to it like it's a person and talk to it like it's your employee that you're hiring and you basically say, okay, here's the, here's my goals. This is what I'm trying to do. Now it can be hard for people to think about all the details that it should, that we should give it to, right. to have it understand. So what right. I do, I flip it back on chat GPT and actually I'll, in the free uh, PDF that I've got with the 10 tools, I've got 10 prompts and this is the first one that I give. So people can just copy and paste if they want to, if they're listening to this, but I flip it back on chat GPT and I basically say, Hey, I, I'm going to have you create me content in the future. But in order to do that, I want you to ask me the top 25 questions that you must know to mm -hmm. do this at the highest level possible. So nice. now I don't have to think, okay, what should I tell it? It's asking me the 25 things that it needs to know to do that job at the best of its ability. And then right. I just answer all those questions, put it back in there and say, here's the answer to your questions. And the content that it creates after that is going to be hyper specific to your market, your niche, your target audience, what you're trying to do. And that's the yeah. biggest thing that agents can do to absolutely change the game. And it's easy to do. Well, that's what I've heard before. It's so generic. I'm like, yeah, but you're not feeding it. If you, if I wanted to write the first 30 days of, let's say our onboarding in our company, I've got to give it the things that I, we actually do and then say modify or enhance or add in or add to. And I think they don't slow down long enough to add in the inputs. So yeah. let's say that we did add it in. One question I get from everyone is how do I train it to know me though, over and over again, when I've, maybe I'm asking it different things throughout the day. So how do I train it to know, let's say Tina calls voice yeah. and then keep it my voice. Is there a setting? Cause I don't know that answer to be honest with you. Yeah. yeah. So there's a couple things here. First off, it will remember what's in the conversation, but when you start a new conversation, it's not going to remember that other right. information. Right. You can reference old conversations and it still remembers. So that the list on the left-hand side is like a history of your chats. I always put in the answers to the 25 questions and then I rename because there's a little three dot thing that you can click yeah. when you hover over the thing and it, it, you can rename the name of the chat. And I rename it Stringer Realty, whatever right, the business right. is that I just answered the questions for. And then I always reference Stringer Realty chat when I'm creating content for Stringer Realty because I've trained it on that. Now, uh, yeah. what I would do, because there is, and, and a lot of people don't know this, after a certain amount of time, and I think it's about 300 pages of a book, if you want to think of it that way, as far as the text, where it will start to forget information. Because it's mm -hmm. context windows only so long. Right. So you do want to save the answers to those questions in a notepad, Google Doc, whatever. And then every month or two, put it on your task list to take that and put it back in to remind it or start a new chat. So I would 100% recommend that. Now, if you want it to sound like Tina Call's voice, mm -hmm. one thing I hear all the time is, like, hey, it sounds chat GPT. It sounds yeah. a, yeah. this is not how I type. There's a very specific, and this is in this uh, the PDF that I have as well, that you can copy and paste, but there's a specific um, prompt that's called analyze for style and tone of voice. Mm. And basically what it says is, hey, from here on out, I want you to analyze the following text that I'm going to put in for style, voice, and tone. And everything you create from here on out in that chat, I want you to write in this style, voice, and tone. And then you paste in anything that you've written. It could even be an email to a client or an email to a, right. anyone, a text message, whatever. Right. The more you give it, like the better it's going to be. 
but then it writes how you write. So it sounds right. like you call. Exactly. exactly. One other thing I'll say along those lines is if you want it to do that globally, which means like throughout every single conversation, so you don't have to do that every single time okay. you do it, there is a setting on the bottom left. You can click where your email address is, and there's a setting where you can actually put that in to how it should respond. And you can have it do that for every single chat. It'll overwrite all of them. So yes. if you want your voice to be every single chat, you just do it in that section and you don't have to do it per conversation. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah. That, because people are saying, I trained it for my voice and I'm thinking, how do you? Because it forgets. So I like that idea because you can paste those previous blogs in notes or in, yep. there's a lot of other uh, boards or whatever tools. So I do like that. That's great. And this is 1500 characters that you can 1, put in. Okay. All right. 1500. So it's not a huge window, but it is, yeah. you could throw in 1500 characters of something you've written and you're like, Hey, respond like this every time. I love that. I love that. So let's wrap up. This is so powerful. So I'm sure everybody has been taking notes because I know I have, I'm like, Ooh, I got to use that. What's next for you. And what's next for AI. Do you think? Cause it's like moving so fast. I've been texting you things like Look at this. <laughs> um, what do you think? There's, it's moving so quickly that I don't think anyone really knows what to expect. I think yeah. that there's going to have to be some regulations and I think we'll probably see some regulations on certain things because AI generated voices, AI generated avatars are getting so good where you yeah. can clone yourself and clone your right. voice. And it's scary to think of how people could use because it's just like money. More money just makes you more of who you are. Exactly. I think it's the same with technology. Like bad people are going to use technology just to be more bad. Good people I, will use technology to be more good. And I so that, that is a scary thing, but it'll be very interesting to see you know, how the government regulates certain things. And yeah, it's, it's quite a fun ride that we're on for sure, but it's moving so quickly. Yeah. I talked to somebody the other day, just one of our vendors and he was like, yeah, I just give me permission and um, I can create you and your voice. And I was like, this is so creepy, but he wanted it in writing. I'm like, even that can be fake eventually. Like it's just, everything is so, can be so fake. So it is a little scary, but we've enjoyed the ride. Um, who knows in 10 years, if we'll be having the same conversation, but right. for now we'll do it and use it for good. We'll use it in real estate. But if you guys want to know anything else about AI, this is my AI guy. And uh, we're all about abundance and giving back on this podcast, Phil. So is there like a little PDF or anything that you can give them. I know there's the one that we have. Is that the same one? I update it. So I've got a new version. So that's, it's AI tools, pdf.com. So AI T O L S pdf.com. And it's got a download there that you can download that free resource. It gives you my 10 favorite tools as of right now for real estate. And then it gives you 10 prompts like we were referencing to where you can just copy it, paste it in. So you don't have to think about how to a uh, ask the question. I love that. They, they will probably race to do that. So thank you for giving them that. Thank you for being here. And thank you for just being our AI guy and teaching us hey. all these cool things because I'm using them every single day. So I, I appreciate you. you guys so much. It's always an honor to, to talk with you and be on with you. So yeah. And I'll make sure I look at your schedule to find out where out of North Carolina I can come visit you. Since, <laughs> right. uh, well, we got going. Seattle tomorrow and then I think Vegas is next. So we'll see. I love it. I love I will see you soon, I'm sure. Thank you again and uh, happy new year. All right. See ya.